Hello, in this tutorial we're going to improve the flexibility and the way in which we're implementing this HUD by creating a new Heads Up Display class or a HUD class. Now as a review, in the main application in the last segment we added this label such that when we run this we've got our game that shows the movement of the ship and the position information but as we extend this we're going to show more and more information about our game so it makes sense to actually take the display of this information and pull it out of the main application and put that into a separate class very similar to what we did with the ship when we moved the logic of the ship into a separate ship class so let's add a new class called HUD we'll right click on the Starshooter project we'll click and add new file and it'll be an empty class and we'll call this all caps HUD so now here we have the public class HUD now just like we did before we're going to define the attributes or the variables inside of this new class and then we're going to populate this class with methods that we can call to make it do things we have the constructor and we know that this is a constructor because it's named the same thing as the class itself. We'll also have a render and an update position function that we'll add here. Okay, so let's go into our app main and we'll take all of this using statements and we'll copy that into our HUD.CS because we're going to need to make reference to all of these different things that we'd like to do. And what I want to do is pull this label information out of the main game and pull that into the HUD class itself. So we're going to take all of this UI system initialize all the way through the set scene and cut that out. And then we're going to paste that into the constructor of the HUD here. Okay, so now I don't want to just call this L for the label. What I want to do is inside of my class HUD, I'd like to create a private label that's going to represent the position information of the ship so in my heads up display I'm going to display what is the position of the ship here and so instead of calling this L I'm going to call it position and so let's copy that and paste it throughout this code replacing the L reference with this information about this new label called position so we're going to create the the new label we're going to set its X and Y position, its width, and then its text. And then we're going to add that into our scene. Make sure that you change the add last, add child last, such that we're adding that position there. Okay. And that should do it for our constructor, right? Then we're going to set the scene and make the active scene the scene that we just created here. I'm going to actually do a couple more labels in this HUD ultimately. So just to break this down, I'm going to have the initialize of the graphics. I'm going to create the new scene and then I'll add all of the elements into the scene and then finally I'll set that scene as active. Now if we run this right now, you'll notice that we're making a reference to this graphics, but we don't actually have access to it. So very similar to what we did with the ship, we're going to need to pass this graphics context as a property, or I should say as a parameter to the constructor. So let's copy and paste that in here so now the heads up display constructor takes in this graphics context and I'll have a private graphics context that I'll call a graphics and here when I want to start things off I'm going to set the graphics context here the graphics property to be whatever you pass me as a parameter to the constructor so I'm going to set up my graphics property I'm then going to initialize my UI system. I'm going to create a new scene, and then I'll add this label into the scene. Okay, so that's the constructor for the heads up display. Now let's go up here into the app main. I no longer need this label, so I'll go ahead and remove it, right? Because the label is being managed in the HUD. And since I'm not doing any UI, I can actually remove this using statement at the beginning because all the UI is going to be handled in that HUD class. But what I do need is actually to create an instance of this HUD class. So let's create that here. I'll make it a private static HUD object. And I'll call it lowercase hud. Now in the initialize, I'm going to create a new HUD and I'm going to pass it the graphics. Notice it's expecting that graphics context. So now I create the variable here 
as part of my main game. And then when I initialize the game, I'm going to create the new HUD. And now I don't have this label, so I need to do away with this. In the update method, I want to tell the HUD to update its information. So the HUD has this position label, but as the game runs, I need to pass it this new information about the ship. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to call the HUD, and I want to ultimately have something called update position, and I want to pass it this string that I would like for it to represent to the screen. So this position on the ships X and Y, what I'd like to do is pass this string information just like I was displaying before, but I want to pass it as a parameter to the update position function. Now this doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and write it. Let's go into the HUD, and right after the constructor, let's create a public void, update position. It's going to take in a string, so it's going to take in this string, and I'll call it s. And what we're going to do inside of this function is define the code such that the position dot text is equal to s. Now what is position? Position is this label, and so I'm saying the text of the label should be whatever you pass in to me. So notice in the update function of the main game, it's going to update the ship's position and figure out if the user is pressing any buttons down, and then it's going to tell the HUD to update its position text, changing that label to be whatever the ship's X and Y would be. Okay, in the render, I'm not going to call UI system render anymore. What I'd like to do is tell the HUD to render itself. Now, we don't have a render function in the HUD yet, so let's go here and create that. Let's create a public void render function. And simple enough, we're just going to tell the UI system to render itself. Okay, so now we have this heads up display class that right now just has a single label and it's got a reference to the graphics context in which it lives. In the constructor it's going to set up the graphics and set up the UI system in the scene. It's going to add this label called position into that scene and then it's going to set that scene to be active. Whenever you tell it to update its position it's going to take in that string and set the text of the label to be whatever you pass in and you can also tell the HUD to render itself. Okay, so if we go back up to our main program, what have, what have we changed? We now have a HUD property here. In the initialize, we create a new HUD and tell it that it lives within the graphics context of the main application. When I update my main game, I'm going to tell the HUD to update itself by updating its position. And when I render the main game, I'm going to render the ship, and then I'll render the HUD. So let's run this. We'll see what we get. Great, so there's our position, it's being updated, we're moving our ship around, everything looks good, and you might say, well, nothing has really changed. You're right, visibly, we still have the same functionality in the display information, but we now have a better structure to our program because we have the heads-up display as a separate class, and our main game is very, very small and clean. We have the ship and the HUD as entities in our game, we initialize the ship in the HUD here in the initialize of the main game. We update the ship in the HUD, and then we render the ship in the HUD. So we want our main game to be as simple as possible. And to show you where we're headed with this, let's see how easy it would be to update the HUD. Let's create a new label beyond just the position. We're going to calculate the frames per second here. So we'll have FPS as a label within the HUD. And just like we did here with the position information, let's create a FPS to be a new label. I can set the position FPS uh, X is going to be hmm, actually what I'd like to do is create this all the way to the right of the screen so I'm going to ask myself my graphics screens width uh, screen rectangle width and what I'm going to do is subtract out 310 from that because I want the width of my FPS to be 300, so I'd like a small offset there. I'll set the FPS Y to be 10 because I want it in the up, the upper right, and then I'll set the width to be 300. 
Okay, so what we've got now is the positions label will be in the upper left and the FPS label will be in the upper right. Okay, I could set the FPS text to be equal to FPS equals, uh, let's say question mark, I don't know what the frames per second is yet. We haven't calculated that yet. And just like we added the position label into my scene, I'm gonna need to add the FPS label into the scene as well. So scene.rootwidget. Add, add child last, and I'm going to add the FPS. So let's run this and see what we get. All right, and now we have both of our labels showing up. We've got our position and our FPS. And you think, well, I thought the FPS label was supposed to be all the way over here to the right. The problem is we've got the text aligned, right? The width is 300 and the text alignment is left justified. So let's change that. We could set FPS dot horizontal alignment to be equal to horizontal alignment dot right. So we're going to set the horizontal alignment of this to be right justified. And now if we run this, you see that we have our label. It is nice and right justified all the way there in the upper right of the screen. And the point of all this is to let you explore how we can add multiple elements into our HUD. Nothing has really changed about the main, right? The HUD is just there and we create it and we render it and we can update the position information. Ultimately, we'll update the frames per second as well. But by having all this information inside of the HUD, I can expand the heads up display, I can add to it, I can do all kinds of things here and add labels and other elements into the scene. And I can make it more and more complicated, but it keeps the main application very, very simple. All right, in the next segment, we will actually calculate the frames per second and update this. But for now, the takeaway from this lesson is that I can create a new class here called Heads Up Display or HUD, and I can manage the scene and the UI system all within that. And that'll do it for this tutorial.